Hey everybody, Eric here. And today I'm going to share with you not one of my tricks, but actually a trick I picked up from somebody in our SketchUp community on how to make a cool stylized character like this duck behind me. So when I say stylized character, firstly, kind of what I mean is something that you might see in a, a Nintendo video game, like Legend of Zelda. So you can see there's the strokes and then there's these solid colors and it's kind of cool. Now watch what happens really quick when I rotate around. You can see his eyebrows and then they kind of disappear and then they come back. There's almost like this thick edge. And if you know anything about SketchUp, uh, we do have control over line thickness and color and style, but not quite like that. And so when I first saw this, I thought, well, how did he do this? And so, of course, I figured out how he did it. And I'm going to share that trick with you now. So let's just go ahead and get to it. So I'm going to credit the author at the end. Don't worry. Uh, but what I want to do first is just kind of unpack how this effect is sort of made. You can see, firstly, um, I kind of made took it to the next level by making the duck's head follow you as I move around. But just the stylization of the look and feel. That's kind of what I'm after. So let's let's kind of focus on that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to really quickly start a new file. And the reason why is because I want to start completely from scratch. I don't want anything from that file to sort of influence me. So I'm going to create a circle and I'm going to move this up because what we want to do is get a sphere. And then I'm going to could have had a sphere already made, but you know, hey, it's actually fun to sometimes just do things completely from scratch. Grab the follow me tool, get my sphere. I'm going to hang on to this. You'll see why in just a second. I'm going to hang on to that circle. It might be kind of useful. But I've got my sphere here. And the first thing I want to do is give this sphere a color. You'll s I can color it later, but I'm just going to go ahead and give it a color now. Now, the second thing I'm going to do is copy this sphere. So I can copy it with a shortcut, or I can come up here and go edit and then come down to copy. And then I'm going to go ahead while I'm up here, go paste in place. So first thing before I paste in place is I probably want to be safe and make this a group. So I have a sphere that's protected within a group that has a color applied to it. And I'm going to come over here and go edit, paste in place. Now I have another sphere. So you can see the faces are Z fighting because I have these two spheres that are kind of overlapping each other. Now this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky. I'm going to come over to, doesn't matter what color because I want to make it it does matter what color. Hang on, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to make it a different color to differentiate it a little bit. This outer edge here, this outer sphere, is going to be the color of that stroke. So if I want to go black, I can go black. If I want to do a color like a dark blue, maybe I'll do a dark blue stroke. Again, this is stylized. So it might look a little bit confusing now, but this is where I'm going to come over and scale it. I'm going to hold the Option Control Modifier. So I'm scaling it, you can see I'm scaling it a little bit bigger than the actual, the first sphere. So now I've got a sphere within a sphere. Might be easy at this point to come over to tools and then down to section plane. And the reason for that is that if I cut a section through here and I kind of move this in, and maybe for this, it maybe would help if I didn't see the, if I open up my styles. So I come over here to styles and I turn off what is the, not the section plane itself, but the section fill. So what I want to do is see inside of these. So I'll toggle that section off. It's still being cut through here. You can see what I mean is now there is a sphere blanketing or surrounding a sphere. Now I'm going to come into this inner sphere and I'm going to give this inside color, I'm going to give that that same dark blue that I painted the outside. I'm kind of doing this, sort of did that the opposite. So excuse me. I'm going to take that same blue and I'm going to pull all the color out of it. So I'm going to pull opacity all the way to 0% and paste that onto the outside. So let me undo that. If I do that again, you can see that whatever color I want my stroke color to be, I go on the inside face of that outer sphere. And then it uh, doesn't matter what color it is because it's completely transparent. And then that's on the outside of that sphere. So you can see what it's doing. It's giving the effect of a thick stroke. So let's come over here and turn that section cut off. And then I've got this outer, I may want to group this actually, just to be safe. So you can see I've got the one that has color on the inside and no color on the outside. And then I've got a sphere that is just a regular solid sphere. And if I wanted a thicker stroke, I could just hold my modifier and I could just sort of decide how I wanted to scale that about. Now this is where the kind of fun part about this, if I group these together, 
make a copy of this using my modifier, maybe come over here and create some sort of monster with, I don't know, maybe a, like a googly-eyed monster. I'm just playing around. Maybe it's a frog, who knows, an alien. Um, in this case, actually, if I have two eyes, I may want to switch from a group to a component. And the reason why is because I kind of I may want the, the eyes to be the same. That way, when I edit one, I'm editing both. So who knows? I'm playing around with sort of the shape and the size and the scale a little bit just to kind of make my character look kind of fun. So let's say that that's good. Now, in this case, I'm going to toggle my section cut back on. And the reason why is because I'm going to want to paint the inside face of the eyeballs a different color, maybe white. That's why I made those two a component instead of the, the group. So if I turn that section cut off, and then the other thing I may want to do is I may want to take this outer box and make that a little bit thicker. And the reason why I want to make sure I'm scaling from the center point, and the reason why I'm making that a little bit thicker is because I kind of want it to be the same thickness as that outer stroke. Now, what might be kind of weird is I'm seeing the edges or the profiles of the circle. So if I come over here to view, edge style profiles, and maybe even view edge style edges, I could kind of turn those off. So I've got this really interesting um, shape. You can see I'm seeing the stroke of the eye almost looks like an eyebrow. And then when I turn this way, it just completely disappears. So that's actually really cool, the fact that it's dynamic and that it's changing. Now, just to make this feel a little bit more like a character, I'm going to take a minute to finish this off. I mean, that's pretty much how the style works. And I know that, see, when you do this the way I'm doing it, you turn the edges off, you're going to lose that. So what color do I want for an eyeball? I don't know. I'm just having fun here. We're, going, we're making this a bit colorful. So you can see I've turned my hidden geometry on, and you can see I've got my double spheres, and I've got my eyeballs, and I've got what looks like a stroke. Turn those edge styles off, or just hide the edges, however you want to do it. And now I've got this kind of the start of what is kind of a cool looking monster. Of course, at this point, I might carve out the inside of its mouth or use something like solid tools to remove that. And then I think my character would get a little bit uh, more and more detailed. So the last thing I want to do is come back to that circle. Let me turn my hidden geometry on one more time, hopefully one last time. Actually, it's not my hidden geometry, excuse me. Uh, that's actually my edges. So my edges are on. I don't need my hidden geometry on for this. I just need my edges so I can see where that circle is. But what's kind of cool about this is that we can actually use this circle to kind of fake the illusion of a shadow. We could also change if we wanted to, uh, maybe in this case, do something more like a colored shadow. And um, since I've got these kind of googly eyes, I might come over here. I'll show you where I'm going with this in just a second. Is I might come over here and take um, depending on where the sun is being cast from, you may want to come over here and do something like that. And I don't know why I lost that edge. I'll just reconnect that. And I don't need to worry about the edges because when I turn them back off again, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of Heather for this. And the reason why I'm saying this is because you come into shadows. If you see if I turn my shadows on, I actually have these maybe kind of shadows that I don't want. In this case, I want to actually come into my styles, not my styles, my shadows. And I can uh, make the lightness slider all the way down and the darkness slider pull up to something like 90%. Or you can pull this up all the way to 100%, depending on the color, the tone of that color that you want to achieve. So if I do something like 90%, I still have a shadow, but that's OK. So what that does is that's really interesting because it knocks out all of that sort of color gradation. Again, if I bring that up and that down, you can see with SketchUp's default sun and shade, you have sort of that gradation. But something that's more of a tune style shader, uh, you can pull that lightness up and that, excuse me, the darkness slider up and then lightness slider down. And now because there's no actual shadow, if I turn on my turn off my axis, because there's no actual shadow being cast here, I just kind of created one that's for fun. So if I wanted to group that and I wanted to rotate that, you know, depending on or scale it, depending on how I want the light to hit. So I'm actually in this case faking the shadow and making it look like there's a shadow there. So again, I'll take this whole thing, group this together, move this down. Maybe it needs to be closer to the ground. And there, there's the relationship closer to the ground. Probably scale that back 
a little bit, something like that. That's cool. So that's my stylized character. So that was the second to last thing I want to do. I'm going to wrap up by just switching to my web browser because I said I would give credit where it's due. This came from a forum post from Rafael Rivera. He's a uh, modeler and extension developer and does these kind of cool low poly illustrations. And he kind of shared the process that was based off of a 2D illustration by an Instagram artist, um, Rin. Uh, and so I want us to just kind of go all the way through the, the process and say, hey, that's awesome. We all inspire each other. We're a cool community where we share stuff. And so thank you to both of you for putting your art out there into the world. So as always, I'll wrap up by saying thanks for watching. I hope you learned at least one new thing in this video. I know I did when I learned it, so always love passing those tips on to you. Um, let us know how you feel in the comments. Did you Have you done this before? Have you tried it? I know characters maybe is not most of the world that we live in, but could this be applied to something else? Maybe low poly kind of stylized props for game art or for, um, for architectural design. Give it a try. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure while you're there, Subscribe if you haven't already so you get access to all the new stuff that comes down on this channel and give us a like and give us a share. All right, so I'll end there. I'll say thanks for watching and see you next time.